Hey, welcome to Brightworks. So what are we working on today? Well, today we are installing the pistons and cylinders. So we've got uh, number three, number two, and we're gonna work on number one. And it's probably in the best place to be able to show you kind of what happens here. The other side, we've got the rod supported by little rubber bands so that we can spin the crank and not have a rod get, uh, get caught up. But uh, so far, so good, and we'll take you through the process. There's a little bit more to it than just uh, slapping a cylinder in. All right, see you in the next segment. All right, so for those of you that have been following along with this little build, uh, you know we've already installed our piston rings. So the next step is I'm going to put our base gaskets on. So these are copper base gaskets. Um, definitely you're going to want to talk to your machinist to find out Hey, what'd you do to the case? What'd you do to the, the spigot bores? Uh, what uh, size base gaskets should I be using? Because the O30s, um, there was a post, I think it was on Facebook in one of the engine buildings, and there was a clattering of the engine. Uh, definitely sounded like we had, uh, or somebody had not put in the proper thickness base gasket and maybe the pistons were touching the, the valves or just the cylinder head itself. So <clears throat> normally, way back in the day, they just slap these on and that would be it. Well, these mag cases are 40 years old now, so they need all the help they can get. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some Cure-L T and we're gonna put a little thin coat of it down here at the bottom we're gonna put our base gasket on and then we're gonna put a little coat of it up on, the, on top of it. So this is not uh, rocket science. There is no uh, specific amount. You just wanna make sure you have a, a good uh, coverage so that you get squeeze out all the way around. Down towards the bottom where the cylinder fins are longer, I tend to go a little bit heavier only because that's where if any oil ends up sitting down there, you probably got other problems, but since it's at the bottom, we definitely don't want to skimp on it. It takes a lot of time to get down there. Um, so spending a couple extra bucks on sealant, say la vie. Um, <clears throat> now these are pretty square bores, but some of the bigger stuff, the three twos and three liter cases, you're gonna to have to make sure that you have your uh, release uh, reliefs oriented towards where the um, stud holes are. So for these though, they're pretty square. This is a uh, small bore. All right, so we got that on there. Now we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go around. And you saw me make sure that everything was super clean because you get a little something in there and uh, your cylinder won't sit flush. Let's see. And you probably wouldn't notice that until you went to torque down your uh, cylinder heads. All right, there you have it. So little Cure-L T underneath, little Cure-L T on the top, copper base gasket. Gotta make sure it's the right thickness. This is not a stock thickness because uh, we had some work done. So custom, uh, uh, base gaskets. All right, that is that, and uh, we'll get back with you as we start to install this thing. All right, so we're going to install cylinder number one. Um, I already cleaned and greased everything, but one last little wipe of the spigot bore. Make sure everything's clean there. Okay, so one of the little things that if you're gonna install the cylinders uh, with the pistons already loaded, you wanna make sure that you have the piston out so that the pin will slide in. And you really don't want the piston to come too far out, otherwise your rings pop out. It's not the end of the world, just take it apart, put it back in, but with everything already uh, having sealant and grease and everything on it, you kinda don't really wanna go past that, that, uh, that point. So just gently pulling your piston out. Okay, so now we're gonna fit the piston over. And on these small bores, sometimes the ARP head studs, especially since we had case savers, 
it's called porcupining the uh, the case. The um, actual studs will be a little closer than you would hope, and you just gently have to work the cylinder across the threads. All right, now we got it in there. <clears throat> so we've got our rod kind of floating around, and sometimes this goes super easy, uh, number three, super easy. Uh, sometimes you got to take the whole thing apart, reset everything, uh, and just kind of take a deep breath and say, all right, we're going we're gonna to start again. So we'll see. She's already given me a little uh, challenge on number, number two, so maybe number one will go. All right, in this case, since we had our pins all weighed out, this one had a red dot on the top of it. Um, that red dot meant it was our heaviest pin. And when we figured out the weight and balance for the um, <clears throat> pistons and, and pins and rods, we know that this one has to go, the red dot goes in number one. It's all on a spreadsheet somewhere. You can do any color dot you want. Uh, in this case, I chose a red dot. So I'm gonna get her piston out just a little bit more. And then we're gonna slide our pin in. Okay, so we got our pin started. Now, how you hold the rod up, up to you. Go from the bottom, go from the top, or you can go from the side. That'll put a little stress on your, on your finger, but hey, <clears throat> it all works. Okay, so. Feels like we're about in the right spot. And you just gotta be kind of gentle, pushing. Don't use a hammer. <laughs> Been there, done that. Not worth the issues. Oh, it feels so close. And this is why most of the time I will actually install the pistons first and the cylinder second. All right, we're good. We got our pin. It's all the way in. I can see it on the back side butted up against the uh, 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 little clip, the C clip. Now, this is where it gets a lot of fun because... This little clip that you see here, sometimes they go in easy, sometimes they go in hard. People complain about the JE piston clips. Um, the way JE designs their pistons makes it very easy to slide those in. These original Mollies, um, boy, tell you what, we could have some fun here. So we will see how well this goes. Hopefully I don't have to cut the camera and do a lot of cursing. That's the goal. No cursing. So we're just going to gently get that circ clip kind of aligned. And then we'll see if she decides to take. It's not happy in that particular spot. Pull it out, move it up just a hair. <clears throat> All right, now let's see. So you can use your favorite tool. I've had this screwdriver for 20 plus years. So it tends to be one of my favorite tools, but does not seem to want to cooperate. All right, we'll go with the baby screwdriver and see if that'll work. <clears throat> I think Stomsky sells a piston pin install tool or a piston circ clip install tool, but do this the old fashioned way.
change up the orientation. Scheiße. I guess German curse words on a YouTube may or may not be approved. Sometimes you get them on the absolute first try, and then sometimes little bastards just want to fight you. So I'm just trying to roll it in. Okay. And there we have it. So. If you didn't push fast forward and you suffered through that entire thing, um, just patience is really what it comes down to. You also want to absolutely double check that that circlip is in that groove, which it is. Fantastic. And then we're just going to gently work the cylinder down. And as we get close to the spigot, you don't want to have the cylinder cockeyed, otherwise it'll... That'll screw up your spigot surface. So there we go. She slid right home. And then we put her in. And the last step that I do because of the Cure all T is I throw on two piston holders. Oops. Doesn't matter where you put these. That is a personal preference. I just happen to prefer there. All right. And as we tighten these guys down, you see that little squeeze out on the top of the cylinder? Uh, that's the Cure-All T between the base gasket. And then later, once uh, you get the heads on, you can kind of just go back in and just clean that stuff up. It doesn't matter. Not gonna hurt anything that it's there. The only other very key thing for piston installation is you have got to make sure that you've got your pistons oriented correctly, especially on these old CIS motors. The bump goes to the left. Right, and that's because your spark plug is sitting right here. So as the piston comes up, you can see that it protrudes out past the top of the cylinder. So if you have a spark plug sitting there and you put that in upside down, not only are you going to reduce the swirl effect that uh, is supposed to be happening there, but you'll have an interference fit. So there you have it. A uh, couple of minutes, a little bit of patience. Uh, clean everything and then just take your time because those all these parts are very very uh, gentle uh, Going together and they will fit so don't pound anything. Don't beat anything. Just take your time All right, that is half of a short block. We'll get on to the other side and uh, We'll be back with you the next uh, maybe we'll do a cylinder head install Thanks for watching check us out at brightworks.com and again, this is a 74 mag motor, so it's got a little bit different spacing on the spigots. But if you like these kind of videos, hit that subscribe button so we know to keep doing them. Thanks. Have a great day.